what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Well, not exactly in the NBA though. Word flows out easily, and you cannot keep even the craziest stories hidden from the public. From pulling out a gun on your teammate to smashing a fire extinguisher and breaking your hand in the middle of the playoffs, here are seven of the NBA's craziest locker room stories. In this video, we're gonna take a look at them and the context behind them. What led to them happening? Some were so ridiculous that it makes you wonder, what in the world were they thinking? How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and without further ado, let's get started. Number 7, Larry Bird's Bet When Manute Bull entered the NBA in 1985, he was a spectacle to see. Nobody has seen anything like this guy before, I mean we've seen taller players around his height, but the way this guy was built, it shocked a lot of people. Including players too, especially Larry Bird. In their first encounter, Larry caught the ball on offense, and he thought he was wide open. Then, Manute, with his long strides, covered the distance within a split second, and blocked Larry's shot. That encounter baffled Larry, as he'd never seen any player do that to him before. After the game was over, him and all the Celtics went into the locker room. Larry decided to make a betting pool. Everyone on the team, which had 12 players, chipped in $100 into the pool. And the first guy to dunk on Manute Bull would get all $1,200. Since the game was over, they had to wait until the next time they meet. However, the next time the Celtics played the Bullets, nobody was able to dunk on him. After every time they played each other and nobody was successful, they continued to add more and more money into the pot, until it reached over $10,000. This was a huge deal to Larry, not for the money, but because he really wanted to dunk on him and win the bet. There were even times when Larry purposely stalled the Celtics' offense just so he could try and dunk on Bull. In an article, this is how it described one particular possession. Instead of driving in and making an uncontested layup, Larry stops, cradles the ball on his hip with his left arm, and points at Manute, who is still down at his own basket and completely out of the play. Larry is waving frantically for Manute to hurry back on defense, so that Larry can go in and try to dunk on him. Manute was clueless to our little game within the game, but he dutifully hustled back and when Larry came flying in, Manute sent him and the ball back one more time. To the dismay of Larry, he was not able to do so after countless attempts. Instead, Robert Parrish became the first Celtic to dunk on Bull, and he won the $10,000 pot. Number 6, Dennis Rodman tries to commit suicide. Rodman has always been known for being different. From the outside, he always carried himself as a colorful persona, a man of many mysteries and hobbies. However, in the early 90s, he was really struggling with his mental health, and it sucked because he didn't have many people to talk to about it. Back then, people tend to look down on others who have mental health problems, and they completely dismiss them, or they blame the victim for being weak. This brings us to 1993. At this point, the Pistons were no longer contenders, and Rodman saw his teammates, his friends, get traded on a whim. This really upset him, because he knew the NBA was all about business, but it really hurt him that the team traded away those closest to him. In the days leading up to his attempted suicide, his teammates noticed in the locker room that he was totally out of it. One day, he brought a loaded shotgun to the practice facility. He walked into the parking lot into his car, locked the doors, and was about to pull the trigger. But then, according to Rodman, songs from Pearl Jam started playing on the radio, and he fell asleep. This is what he said. I had the gun in my lap, and next thing you know, I fell asleep listening to Pearl Jam. Then I woke up and all the cops and everyone was there. I didn't know what was going on, I totally forgot I had a gun in my hand. He then explained what pushed him over the edge. It was about feeling betrayed, because I wanted to be loved so much in my life, and when I got to the NBA, I didn't expect the NBA to be like that. I didn't expect teams to just trade players and you say, okay, this is a business, and forget about it. That was what drove me to that point. Number 5. J.R. Smith throws a bowl of soup. It was a tumultuous 2017-18 season for the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
And during a rough stretch, J.R. Smith was having some of the worst games of his career and he was clearly frustrated. What happened was, in a game near the end of the season, Smith had yet another pitiful performance. In the locker room, he was listening to Damon Jones give them the usual lecture. You know, the whole yada yada, gotta play harder with more intensity and more focus, and then he made a comment targeting Smith. It triggered him, so he picked up a bowl of soup and chucked it at Jones. I believe it was a bowl of chicken tortilla, if I remember correctly? Something like that. Luckily, it hit Jones on the shoulder and not in the face or anything. Smith got suspended from the team for one game, but the fallout was even worse. Jones was the assistant coach and years later, he admitted that the incident caused a rift between them. They didn't talk or make amends until the end of their playoff run. Since Smith was the starting shooting guard that season, it's pretty unfortunate they weren't talking. The entire team was discombobulated too. This outbreak by Smith was just a result of the dysfunctional locker room that plagued them the entire year. Number 4, Draymond Green scolds Kevin Durant. You know, this might not seem that crazy, but when was the last time you heard a teammate yell to your face that the team doesn't need you? Especially towards a superstar like Kevin Durant. Early in the 2018-19 season, the two of them had an argument that started on the court, but it got real feisty in the locker room after the game. According to Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports, this is what Draymond said. Green called Durant a b**** multiple times. In a summarized version, sources said Green shouted, You're a b**** and you know you're a b**** The rhetoric continued even when Kerr attempted to direct the team's attention to his whiteboard. Green blurted out to Durant something along the lines of, We don't need you, we won without you, leave. In fact, Draymond even told Durant that he's going to leave the Warriors after the season is over anyway, which he actually did. Draymond temporarily got suspended by the team, but later admitted that he said this to Durant to give him motivation to play better. I guess he got motivated to leave the Warriors instead. Number 3, Amari Stoudemire smashes a fire extinguisher. Like many other Knicks fans, I really enjoyed Stoudemire's time in New York. When he first came, he brought hope to a franchise that desperately needed somebody to lift them up. Sadly, he could not maintain his superstar level of play, and by his second season, he was visibly declining. This brings us to the 2012 playoffs. In the first round, the Knicks lost their first two games, and Stoudemire was struggling. He was angry and upset he wasn't getting enough shots. In Game 1, he only took 7 shots, Game 2, 9 shots. So when Amari entered the locker room right after losing Game 2, he released that anger. He took out his frustration on a fire extinguisher, smashing the protective glass with his fist. It created a nasty scar and he got stitches. His arm was in a sling for a few days, but surprisingly he recovered quickly. Amari was forced to miss Game 3, but he came back in Game 4 and had his best game of the series, scoring 20 points. That would be the only game the Knicks won against the Heat. It was a quick 5 game series. It didn't matter much because the Knicks were going to lose anyway regardless if Amari smashed his hand, but this is definitely something you don't see often. Number 2, Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenton. Pretty much everyone knows about this story already, but there are some details that people don't realize. So the context is, in 2009, Arenas and Crittenton both brought guns into the locker room, loaded and pointed them at each other. It was over gambling disputes, however, other details came out years later. In Karan Butler's book, he said the confrontation was over $1,100 from a card game on the airplane. But in reality, according to Arenas himself, that wasn't true. Apparently, the real dispute was between Javaris Crittenton and JaVale McGee. They were playing cards and McGee won, but then he stopped playing and left the table. So Crittenton did not have a chance to win back his money. Arenas was actually sleeping on the plane the entire time, and when he woke up near the end of the flight, he heard about Crittenton losing money to McGee, so he just started clowning him, just pouring on the trash talk. At one point, telling him, Javaris, I will burn your car while you're still in it, and then we'll find a fire extinguisher to help you ass out. This was the real reason why that gun altercation happened, cause Crittenton was pissed off with Arenas for talking all that smack for no reason. 
Still, the incident had a profound impact on both of their careers. It was the downfall of Gilbert Arenas, partly due to injuries, and partly because he got suspended for the rest of the season. Crittenton never played another NBA game after that. Number 1. Chris Paul Leads a Tunnel Assault in early 2018, the Clippers defeated the Rockets in what seemed like a normal regular season game. But it wasn't. Apparently, there was a lot of talking between Austin Rivers and Chris Paul, plus some other players too, and it got pretty heated. Reportedly, during the game, Blake Griffin and Austin Rivers were yelling at Mike D'Antoni for not staying within his coaching box on the sideline, and he kept walking onto the floor. They hit each other a few times throughout the game, which pissed off the Clippers. So after the game, Chris Paul decided to give the Clippers a scolding for yelling at his coach. According to a report, this is what happened. Houston players stormed the Clippers locker room via a secret passage that connects both locker rooms. Reporters were initially told that a fight broke out in the Rockets locker room. It sounded at first like things got heated between Paul and James Harden. But when the dust finally settled, it turns out Paul led a surgical strike into the home team's locker room. Also, the police were called. Yeah, the police were called. It was the most bizarre sequence of events we've ever seen after a game. And of course, this whole thing spawned a ton of memes. Anyway, those were 7 of the craziest locker room stories in NBA history. Let me know if you know any others that should have been on this list. Which one was your favorite, and which one was the strangest in your opinion? Let me know in the comments, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.